if you watch part one of my history of religion series, you learned what paganism was. It's the polyistic belief of Father God, Mother God, and Son of God. You learned where it started and where it spread. You may have understood more why people believe Christianity was stolen from Egyptian beliefs, or you may still even believe that lie because you still haven't been exposed enough to the truth about it at all. We can't get too deep into the truth about Christianity without getting to know and understand the children of Israel. This nation of people is extremely important in every sense, and they must be understood completely. You know, it's funny that so many people deny that Jesus existed, but they can never deny his bloodline of people existed before him. They could deny the Bible, but can't deny the children of Israel existed. It's because there's too much evidence. So because they want to continue being a naysayer, they disregard this nation of people as irrelevant. That couldn't be anything further from the truth. Now please note, I'll be condensing a great deal of history into this video series. So please forgive me if I left something out you might have considered important. Uncovering what I think everyone needs to know in order to understand religion and the true world we live in. So let's begin. In part one, I started post-flood, but I focused more on the line of Ham. Again, if you have not watched this video, please click the link. That information is crucial and foundational. In this part, we will focus on the line of Shem, Noah's other son. Shem had many sons, grandsons, great-grandsons, etc. until there was Abram. Genesis chapter 11 gives a more complete list. God changed his name to Abraham and said he'll make Abraham a great nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, an obvious reference about Jesus, and that kings will come from his line. The Lord established an everlasting covenant between him and Abraham's descendants. He also promised him and his descendants the land of Canaan, which today is known as the land of Israel, which includes Palestine. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Yahweh passed Abraham's covenant to Isaac. Isaac later had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. So Jacob received the covenant of his father Isaac and grandfather Abraham. Jacob was blessed. God appeared to Jacob and changed his name to Israel and told him to be fruitful and multiply and the nation shall come from him and the king shall come from his loins and the land of Canaan that they were in should be given to his descendants. So be fruitful and multiply he did. Israel had 12 sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these sons are what we know to be the children of Israel. Now, one of those sons, Joseph, was betrayed by his brothers, and they tried to kill him. He didn't die and wound up being a prisoner in Egypt. He was blessed by God and was able to interpret crucial dreams for Pharaoh of Egypt. Because of this skill, Pharaoh gave him a high command in Egypt, and he moved himself and his other 11 brothers, along with his father Jacob, to Egypt. It was while living in Egypt that the children of Israel multiplied greatly, and as time passed, Joseph died, and his influence was no longer there. The Pharaoh of Egypt at the time said, These Israelites are growing in size and number, and they soon will overtake us if we do not deal harshly with them, and overtake them. And it was at this point the tribes of Israel became slaves of Egypt for over 400 years. Now Moses was born of the tribe of Levi, but in order to save him, his mother sent him down the river where the Pharaoh's daughter was, compassionate and raised him. When he got older, he killed an Egyptian and he fled Egypt. It was at this time God spoke with him and told him to go back to Egypt and set his people free from captivity. Moses went back to Egypt and with the help from God, he freed the children of Israel. He brought nine plagues, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened until the last plague. He got Egypt to give up Israel as slaves by the 10th plague, passed over all of Egypt, and killed all the firstborn. The Lord passed over Israel, who were all commanded to put the blood of a lamb on their doorpost. He showed great power this day and showed himself to Israel for the first time. This is where Passover started from. During this time, Israel grew up amongst Egypt's gods 
and influence, and though they knew of the covenant established with their forefathers, it was hard for them to believe when all they knew was slavery and captivity. But the Lord sent Moses and freed them. They fled Egypt and were en route to the land that God had promised them. So I would just pause here in the story briefly, because most of this you have probably heard before. The most important detail to know out of all this is that from the line of Shem came Abraham, who God established an everlasting covenant with that would bless the world. From Abraham came Isaac, then Jacob, renamed Israel, and then his 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. They were in slavery in Egypt for about 400 years, growing around Egypt's pagan gods, which we learned about in part one of this series, until the one true God, through Moses, freed them and displayed his power for the first time. The world would never be the same. The main points of religion begin in this next point of the story, so please take note. Okay, so back to the story. After Israel was freed and on their way to the promised land, the Most High, Yahweh, reaffirmed their covenant. So on their way to the promised land, Moses went up to Mount Sinai to get complete instruction from the Lord, and the Lord established his covenant with the children of Israel. The Lord gave them commands, which we know as the Ten Commandments. The Lord said, I am your Lord God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor anything that is your neighbor's. He told them he was sending an angel that would bring them to the place he prepared for them. The angel will go before them in the midst of the other groups of people, and he will cut them off, all of them. But he also told them something very specific, which was different than any other nation or group have ever heard. He told them that they should not bow down to any of those nations or groups, gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their ways and works, but they shall overtake these groups and tear down their images. In Egypt, he separated himself through the show of his power, and now he commanded them not to commune or even recognize those gods that all those other groups of pagans worshipped. Israel agreed. So it is at this time there is a clear specific break between the gods of the pagans and the god of Israel. Monotheism versus polytheism. Just take note that being that the nations or groups of this world were significantly stronger in size and influence than Israel, the god must have been very powerful to make such an impact that we have in the world today just to add a little common sense thinking in. After this, the Lord called Moses up the mountain and he gave him tablets of stone and the law and the commandments which he gave. And Moses was to teach. He instructed them to make an ark of wood to carry it in. This will be what we know today as the Ark of the Covenant. He also made Aaron and the sons of the tribe of Levi his priest. So while Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord, Israel grew impatient and thought Moses wasn't coming back and they decided they were going to honor the Lord in their own way. They took off their golden earrings and molded it into a golden calf and said, this is the God of Israel, which brought us out of the land of Egypt. They built an altar for it and did burnt offerings and peace offerings. They literally did everything the Lord just commanded them not to do. Yahweh was extremely upset. He told Moses to go down there quickly and stop them. He said they were corrupting themselves and the Lord severely punished them. 3,000 men fell that day. The Lord told them do not worship him as the pagans do. He was very clear that the ways of the pagans provoked him to anger, and Israel was not to do any of their practices. Again, these were practices that they learned from Egypt, as this is how pagans worship their gods. But the God of Israel did not want this at all. And this is very important for you to know in your worship of God today. This is extremely important, again, to understand, because this was a clear separation from the gods of Egypt and Babylon. This was unheard of because the other nations were all pagan. They had no problem with their gods. Israel was and is the different one, and the one true God did not want them to defile themselves 
worshiping those pagan gods. A lot went on in these chapters. Israel was very proud, stubborn, and ungrateful people. So reestablishing the covenant the Lord gave Israel, he gave Israel his law for them to abide and follow. The law was very strict and to be abided by to the letter. All of these rules, instructions, and statutes are known as the law of Moses. These laws were only given to the children of Israel, no other nation. You can read these laws in the end of the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy as well. The Lord told the children of Israel specifically what would happen with them if they follow his laws and statutes, and what would happen if they did not. You can find this specifically in Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is very important to understand, especially when trying to understand the truth of who the children of Israel are today in modern times. It's such an important subject and needs a video dedicated to it alone. So back to the story. The children of Israel continue traveling to the promised land. It's important to understand that Israel traveled a long way in the desert, not really sure where they were going. When they got hungry, the Lord sent manna, sweet bread down for them to eat. When they were thirsty, the Lord quenched their thirst. But it wasn't a completely comfortable trip, obviously, because they're in the desert. And though the Lord freed them out of Egypt and did the remarkable things while they were following him to the promised land, they were aggressively complaining and unthankful. Like I said, they were very proud, stubborn, ungrateful people. They even said they wished they never left slavery in Egypt if they were going to have to deal with the kind of conditions they were dealing with at that point. The Lord was so over them. He was so angry with them that besides a few like Joshua and a couple others, he declared no one over the age of 20 will see the land promised to them. The Lord told Israel he chose them to be a people for himself. He did not set his love for them because they were more in number, because the truth was they were the least, but because he loved them and kept the oath made with their fathers. Israel was his chosen people. It took 40 years, but they finally made it to Israel, and at this time, they became their own nation. We can stop here in the introduction of the Israelites, because there's a lot of information needed to understand Israel. From this introduction, the takeaways you should have are, one, God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham and his descendants. Two, Jacob, later named Israel, son of Isaac, grandson of Abraham, had 12 sons, which came to be the 12 tribes of Israel. Three, Israel was enslaved in Egypt for over 400 years before they came to know their God. Four, through Moses, God freed Israel from captivity and led them to the land he promised Abraham and Isaac. He instituted the Passover. Five, on route, the Lord gave Israel the Ten Commandments. Six, he also gave them the law, which is known as the law of Moses, only given to Israel. Seven, the Lord was only one God and told them to have nothing to do with the other pagan gods. And eight, we now have the only nation that has set themselves apart from the pagan gods worshipped by the other empires, tribes, and nations. This introduction should show that there was always a difference in religions, but it came from one small nation of Israel. And if their God was not as great as he was and is, nobody would know about them today. This one nation had instructions and statutes that no other nation had, and they were powerful enough to escape Egypt and take over the land of Canaan with all of its inhabitants. This God of Israel should be praised and worshiped. Once you understand the history, you cannot deny the other events surrounding the faith. Please stay tuned for the next video because the story of Israel really gets hot. There's so much that is misunderstood about Israel today and sadly it's because we don't read our Bibles. But I will break things down in hopes it will intrigue you to learn more about them on your own. I had to get through this information to get to the points where all the deception takes place. If you're not subscribed, please click the link. If this blessed you, please share it so it can bless others. I thank you for your support. I love you all.